Hi everyone and welcome to video number four on London and the Blitz. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at the impact of the Blitz. And we're starting this one, we're going to look at the impact particularly to do with the air raid shelters. That's what we're concentrating on in this video. Now, of course, if you remember the first three videos, the Blitz was a huge problem for civilians living in London. There was the danger of death, the danger of injury. Many of the early shelters, the first shelters of the war, they tended to be on the surface. For example, Watson's Wharf down in London, down by the docks. Now, they did provide some protection, but they didn't provide protection from a direct hit. Now, at first, the government wasn't keen for the public to use the tube stations, okay, deeper underground. One, they feared a hit, which might then cause flooding and people drowning. And also they thought, if people go down into the tube station, they won't come back up again. We won't be able to move them. So the government weren't really that keen, but the people ignored the government and they started to go down into the tubes for the protection. This led to problems. The early shelters were not particularly pleasant. There were problems. Overcrowding, huge queues, not particularly a sanitary or clean environment, shortage of toilets. Sometimes people were forced to use buckets. How unpleasant. Occasionally it was very dark. There wasn't enough lighting. The smell, the sweat. Sometimes people down there had been drinking, drunken people, fighting. All in all, the early shelters were not particularly pleasant. So, what would be done about that? Well, one new, relatively newish station over at Aldwych, A-L-D, W-Y-C-H, Aldwych. This was slightly better. There were toilets. Lighting was provided. Bunk beds were put in. So Aldwych is beginning to show the way of maybe how the shelters should be organised. But that was just one shelter. It's not enough for all the people who were seeking safety and protection. Again, early in the war, there were some private shelters. Big shops, for example, John Lewis, or big hotels, for example, the Savoy Hotel. But of course, this was mainly for the rich people. Maybe that would cause some problems, which I'll mention in the next video. People were getting upset. Now, the government are beginning to realise this. So they set up a committee and they organise a report to try and work out what to do. And the investigation, the inquiry was led by a man called Lord Horder. And Lord Horder gave an order. And he said, look, we've got to improve it. We need to make the shelters more like the one in Aldwych. Now, before the government actually started to improve things, some local people did it on their own. There's a very famous shelter in London called Mickey's Shelter, named after a man called Mickey Davis. Now, Mickey Davis was an optician who worked locally. His shop, his business had been bombed, closed down. So Mickey Davis, the optician, he saw the problem. See what I did there? Terrible. I apologize. But the important thing for us, what did Mickey Davis do? Well, there was a fruit and veg warehouse over in Stepney down in the East End, and it had a huge basement. They thought, right, thousands of people can seek safety and shelter. 5,000 down in this warehouse basement. But we can't have the old problems, overcrowding, etc. So what he does, he organises a local committee, local people, local businesses, providing donations, providing money to put in toilets, proper ventilation, beds. Marks and Spencers put in a canteen. Tickets were issued to avoid the concept of all this queuing that you had to do. Marshals were used to make it all far more organised. So Mickey's shelter begins to show the way. 
would the government take this idea and improve the shelters? Well, let's have a look. Now, one of the things, unfortunately, one of the sad aspects, sometimes the shelters did not work. Sometimes there were air raid shelter disasters. Now I'm going to mention two here for you. September 1940, the South Hallsville School disaster near the docks down in the East End. We think over 600 people were sheltering. They'd become homeless. They were waiting to be evacuated out of the city, but there'd been a delay. So they were just waiting to move in the school. Unfortunately, dreadfully, the school was hit by a parachute mine. Now, hundreds died. Only 77 bodies were recovered from the school because it was such terrible carnage. The actual amount of the casualties, it's difficult to work out even now. Because, any ideas? The government actually hid the real details the reporting, if it was mentioned in the newspapers, was left very, very vague. Why would the government do that? They didn't want the truth to impact on people's morale. I'll talk about that more in the next video. So there's the first disaster, South Hallsville School. Second one, March 1943, Bethnal Green, the Bethnal Green disaster. It's later in the war notice, almost three years later. By now, tube stations were being used. The government had allowed this. March 43, people were used to going down into the tube station. OK, they were very deep. Normally, they were very safe. But this day in March, there was a surprise attack. The... British fired off their new anti-aircraft rocket defence, which is good and very effective. So that was a good thing. But it was very close to the tube station. It was very noisy. It caused shock. It caused a surprise. And what happened is the people who were going down into the tube station for safety, unfortunately, one woman, when she hears the bang, thinks something that is going off terribly. She's in a state of shock. She's only got a rope rail to hold on to. She falls because of the queue, because of the crush. Others fall. Panic. People are falling. There's pushing. Hundreds fell down. And it's quite a long way. There was a terrible crush. And 173 people sadly lost their lives. Not from the bomb, but being suffocated. It was a terrible disaster. Another disaster in the war. Well, what would the impact be of these disasters? Well, the first one, as I've hinted, sometimes the government tried to suppress the truth because they wanted to avoid damage to people's morale, as I'll mention in the next video. But point number two, the impact, that was sometimes counterproductive because people would just spread rumours. In the atmosphere of war, maybe the government should have told the truth because people spread rumours, lies, and people believed the rumours because of the panic. They wanted something to some explanation. For example, in the Bethnal Green one, the one I've just explained, now it was a terrible accident. The woman fell down, others toppled on top of her and people were crushed. It was a dreadful accident. But because the government didn't show or share the truth, myths and rumours spread up, spread around. The one about the Bethnal Green was that people thought the air raid precaution wardens, the ARPs, they got the blame. Now, how would that be? People said, as people were queuing to go down to the Bethnal Green tube station, there were a group of young people all messing around in the queue, annoying everyone. And the rumour was that the ARP wardens opened their uh, fire hoses and sprayed this group of young hooligans with water. 
That then caused panic, which led to the stampedes and the crushes. Ladies and gentlemen, that was not true. It wasn't the air raid wardens. But in a time of war, if there's no truth, people will believe. Conspiracy theories, not true, but believed. And that was one of the impacts of the government not being honest. The third impact of these shelter disasters, a journalist, a man called Richie Calder, 1941, after South Hallsville School, he wrote a book called The Lesson of London. And in it, he's writing and he's showing, he said, look, the government is not dealing efficiently and successfully with a whole range of issues, the shelters, also homelessness. You've got to remember in the first six weeks of the Blitz, 250,000 people were homeless. They'd lost their homes. Only 7,000 were rehoused. So you can see that there was a huge problem. The government had to do something to allow the civilians to use the deep underground tube stations, which they did. Now, in the next video, we'll continue this idea of looking at the impact of the Blitz. Next time, we'll be looking more importantly at the impact on civilians, what actually happened to their lives, and also this idea of morale, keeping people's spirits up. So that's coming next. As ever, I hope it's been useful. The impact on the shelters. All the best now. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.